I just got my 4x4 stuck just pulling out of the garage. See if this makes any difference. That truck is the perfect support vehicle and I'm very glad I have it. My 4x4 is not four wheel drive and I'd be willing to bet yours probably isn't either. Yours is probably better than mine since mine is currently one wheel drive, but that just makes mine a good starting point to show you what parts you need to drive more wheels and how much of a difference it makes off road when you go from one wheel drive to two wheel drive and onwards. This giant jacked up 4x4 with 37 inch tires, three quarter ton axles and a Cummins swap can't even pull out of my driveway. That's pretty embarrassing. My first problem is that there is no connection to the front wheels. Putting the transfer case into four wheel drive doesn't actually do anything. I need to build a front drive shaft so that there's actually a connection to the front wheels. And then it'll be four wheel drive. Well, not really. But let's get started with that at least. This particular drive shaft came out of a Ram 2500. However, it's too short. So I will need to use this piece of tubing to extend it. Also, it'll connect to my Dodge transfer case but not to my Ford front axle. To make it work, I'm using this Ford big cap U-joint, which has 1310 size caps on one side to connect to the Dodge drive shaft, but then closer to 1330 size caps on the other side to connect to the Ford axle. The first thing I needed from the Dodge drive shaft was the slip yoke. You need a slip yoke so that as your front suspension moves up and down, your drive shaft can get longer and shorter to compensate. I use my lathe to machine off the welds on the slip yoke. You can also just do this with an angle grinder, but I have a lathe, so figured I may as well use it. Then I welded the slip yoke splines on one side of the longer tube and then a brand new double cardon joint on the other side of the longer tube. The drive shaft turned out great in my opinion. I got it installed and my furry little inspector signed off on it. Even though this thing now has power going to the front and rear axles, the front and rear axles have open differentials. This means only one tire on either side of the axle spins at a time. We went from one wheel drive to two wheel drive, but we're still nowhere close to four wheel drive. There's no way this is gonna be good enough, even for the deep snow around my house. Let me show you. It'll probably get stuck pulling out of the garage again. <laughs> Okay, well, it didn't. But that's probably just because a lot of the snow's melted. Let's drive around the back into some deeper drifts and we'll get stuck there. I guess it does a lot better with open diffs than I would have expected. I mean, don't get me wrong, the tires still slip, but then they just pull right on through. It went through the deep snow just fine. Let's just pretend the Explorer got horribly stuck here in order to justify the rest of the video. The story makes a lot more sense if the drive shaft didn't fix the problem. Now it's time to make my two wheel drive Explorer a four wheel drive Explorer. Well, sort of. I'm gonna start by putting a locker in the rear axle, which will at least mean that both of the rear tires will spin at the same time. The locker I'm going with for my build is just a drop-in lunchbox style locker. This type of locker just replaces your side gears and spider gears in your differential. You don't even have to pull the ring or pinion out so you don't have to reset your differential. This makes them a lot quicker to install. They're way cheaper than a selectable locker and they work just as good. You might get some popping when you turn, but I can put up with that for half or a quarter of the price of one of those selectable lockers. If you ever see a YouTuber plug a 
$2,000 part where a $300 part will do just as good of a job, just ask yourself, would they still be plugging that if they didn't get it for free from their sponsor? For this build, I'm gonna keep it realistic and go with a lunchbox locker. It works just as good. My God, that's a big differential. One ton of axles have huge parts. That is twice the size of what I'm used to seeing. That was a whole bunch of work just so that now when I turn this tire, that one also moves in the same direction. Notice that it will ratchet when you need to go around a turn like that. But in general, they move together. All right, let's test this thing again. I came at the snow pile in two wheel drive because I wanted to see how well the locker would do on its own without the front. And I did get stuck pretty quick, but you can see at least that the locker's doing its job. Both rear tires were spinning. You can see the difference between the locked rear and the open front. The front only has one tire spinning, even though the rear had both. As soon as I put it in four wheel drive, it pulled right through. The Explorer is now three wheel drive and can clearly handle driving around my backyard without getting stuck. It's time to go find something slightly harder and go test this three wheel drive 4x4 on a local trail. By the next weekend, most of the snow had melted, but I'll take any excuse to go explore in my come and swapped 4x4. Let's go see what we can find. This Explorer worked awesome. It's hard to see in the video, but this was actually pretty steep and it was off camber. The rear did try to slide off the hill off the cliff a little bit, but overall it did really well. 37s and a rear locker do great, even without a front locker. And this Cummins has all the torque in the world for off-roading. One thing that's really sticking out to me about this Cummins swap is that there is a big difference between off-roading with a big diesel and a gasser. This engine stock makes 400 foot-pounds of torque at 1800 RPMs. Even if I had a big block or an LS in this, it would take double the RPMs to make that much torque. That would mean you'd have to use a lot more throttle and get a lot rowdier have a lot less control in order to do a climb. I don't have a lot of experience off-road, but the experience I do have is mostly in manual six cylinders. With a manual transmission, I'm used to my feet dancing across the pedals the whole time I'm off-roading. Climbing hills in one of those things almost takes three feet. Every time you go for the brakes, you have to also hit the clutch, and every time you try and start on an incline, you have to heel toe in order to hit the throttle. And that is not the case in this Cummins Swapped Explorer. This thing has so much torque at such a low RPM that It'll just go wherever you point it. Starting on a hill is easy because it's gonna spin all the tires before it stalls the engine. And then if you need to brake, you actually can without hitting the clutch because this engine is perfectly happy cruising at 600 RPM. On top of that, the engine braking is fantastic. So going downhill, you don't slip your tires nearly as much from hitting the brakes. So far, especially with a manual transmission, 
I'm really enjoying off-roading with a diesel. If I ran an auto, I probably wouldn't care as much because you get torque multiplication through your torque converter in an auto and the engine doesn't stall on you. But I just much prefer driving a manual. So for what I like doing, this diesel has been awesome. All right, Cummins fanboying over. Let's get back to the point of this video. My 4x4 is now three-wheel drive. I think that was the point of the video. Now you might be thinking, Three out of four, that's not very good. That's like a 75%. But let me remind you that as an engineer, I subscribe to that age old foundational principle that C's get degrees. 75% ain't too bad. Isn't it better to underachieve than not to achieve at all? This is good enough for now. I've got bigger fish to fry on this Explorer. Colorado weather is really weird. Despite the fact that we had multiple weeks of 70 degree weather and I was complaining that we didn't have enough snow in this video, right now as we're getting into May, we've got snow again and I don't have a hood on the Explorer, which means my engine bay is currently filling up with snow. So no front locker for now. This thing did great without one. For now, I got other things to fix. Thanks for hanging out with me in my garage today. I hope to see you next time. Now, get out there and build something.